I recently released my Inside the Mind tool set for Houdini, which is available through Patreon as well as a membership here on YouTube. And I wanted to cover some of the tools inside here. So we're gonna be taking a look at the Modify Normals tool first. So let's go ahead and drop down. I have a few things set up here to illustrate kind of what you can do with this node. So go ahead and drop down and wire this on up. And you see that it has some different settings here. So basically you can choose between a few different settings. Let's go ahead and turn on our normal display here. And by default, it's gonna be set to set normal direction. And if we go ahead and just adjust these, you can see that on our points here, we have our normals being adjusted based on how we affect these values. We can also choose normals along curve, which is going to move the normals kind of facing along the curve, which is gonna be helpful for certain situations. And there's a couple of different options that you can choose here. So first edge, two edges, primitive centroid to send them to the centroid of the primitive. And then we also have normals pointing away, which acts kind of similar to the normal node inside of Houdini. And we have some controls for this as well. So we can affect where the position of the normal is. So if we wanted to adjust it along the X axis, as I go in the positive direction here, you can see that it is going to have things adjust the normals based upon that. We'll also have normals pointing towards. If we go ahead and switch on over to that, you can see that by default, it's gonna to point towards the origin which is helpful for certain situations as well. And then we can also rotate the normals in here. So see that's affecting along all three axes and you can adjust things individually through that as well. We also have the ability to rename the normal vector to whatever we want. So we can essentially just create a vector and use the normal display as our normal display for the, um, the visualization. So that just makes it a little bit easier for new people who are getting into Houdini to kind of figure out what's going on with the vectors without having to actually visualize anything. So let's go ahead and turn that back off and let's wire this into our copy to points, which I just have a simple tube here. And this is just illustrating kind of the copy to points functionality with modify this modify normals node. So this allows you if I set this to normals along the curve and change this from the centroid to one of these first options, you can see that we get this nice movement along our, uh, our circle. And again, if we just change stuff, you can see that it's going to adjust according to the settings that we have set up. So that's useful for certain situations, um, certain procedural modeling things that'll be nice as well. Let's go ahead. I didn't actually bring this one up, but let's do a, let's just do a tube. And if we go ahead and do modify normals, and we change this to normals pointing away, you can just visualize that can see that we now have the normals kind of pointing in this outward direction. If I use a poly extrude node and set this to point normal and set this to existing, you can see that let's go ahead and select maybe this bottom edge here. You can see that I can now extrude that along the normal that we generated, which is super useful for controlling the specific direction that you want to uh, extrude the edge out. And if I go ahead and adjust this, you can see that we can change how that affects the extrusion as well. So pretty useful for some procedural modeling things as well, but we can also use this for uh, the pop sim simulation. So particle simulations, go ahead and dive on in here. I just have a sphere with nothing really changed in here. Um, just turned off the, uh, the guides here. So if I drop in a SOP solver, 
and I dive in here, we can use the modify normals in here as well. So if I go ahead and actually we are viewing our normals, the, you're not going to see anything to start off with. We need to delete off some things. So let's go ahead and do an attribute delete. Attribute delete. There we go. And let's go ahead and just get rid of our velocity because we're going to use that inside of here. So I do have display set. We should be seeing our normals. I'm not really sure why we're not. Interesting. Oh, yeah, that's because I have this set to just nothing right now. So if I go ahead and change this, you can see that we have our normals now. And if we wanted to just kind of rotate these along, not on the y-axis, but anything else, actually, let's set this to normals pointing away. You can see that we now have some kind of craziness going on. And this is just our normal. So if we hit play, you can see that we're just going to have a bunch of more points spawned. There's no movement yet. And that's where this rename vector comes in handy. So if we just set this to V, then we can go ahead and press play. And you can see that there starts to be some movement and just V is just the vector for velocity if you're not aware. But if we don't have this attribute delete, there's already a velocity attribute assigned and it doesn't overwrite that. So we need to delete that velocity attribute first. And then we can set this to maybe color, oops, color FF times like 10. And maybe we'll do this in the Y as well. So dollar FF times five, just give it some different values. And you can see if I press play now that we get some nice weird movement going on here. Pretty cool. You can do some interesting things with this. Obviously this is just kind of looping along, but you can create some interesting movement. And then also you can use your like pop wind with this as well. So if you wanted to just crank up some amplitude here in the swirl size, Go back to the start. You can see that we get some weird movement along with the movement that we already had in there. So you can do some interesting things with that. And then the last thing that I want to showcase here is just a little RBD simulation. So if I go back to our first frame here, I already have this set up because it takes a second to set up. But if I go down to our solver, I've set up a ground plane. And then in the normals node, I'm just setting them to not have any normal. So basically a zero across all of these, because we are going to again, rename the normal vector over to velocity. So then I just selected some points here and I changed the normal direction, just added a little bit of an upward angle to it. And then obviously cranked it out here. And then we're just adjusting this vector. So if I go ahead and set that back to the rename vector and a few Want to, you can visualize what's going on here just by clicking the velocity. You can see that this has our velocity. And if I go ahead and just drop the amplitude here, you can see that we're adjusting that vector so that we set up here. So it just gives you a little bit of a visual control for this if you want to use that as an alternative for something like the point, was it point velocity or something like that? And then if I go ahead and click play, you can see that that moves our points and then shatters our object. So there's a bunch of different uses that you can use this modify normals for. It's super useful, like I said, for procedural modeling, uh, something that I'm using quite a bit with uh, some setups that I've created. So definitely something that you're going to want to have in your arsenal definitely speeds up the process for a lot of things. And I've seen quite a few people specifically ask how to set up the normals along the origin, which again is super simple with this normals pointing towards, just set them to the origin by default. And that's uh, just a, a one, basically one or two click operation. So hopefully this is something that you guys are interested in. Um, there's a bunch of other tools inside of the tool set. So make sure you check out the tool set if you haven't seen the 
uh, the launch video for that. So uh, they will be adding more to this as time goes on. So definitely uh, keep an eye out for some new tools getting added to this as time goes on. But hopefully this helps you out. Um, like I said, take a look at the tool set if you haven't already. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for your support and have a good day.